There was a time where sedans were everything. Think Opel Lotus Colt and think 500e and that's just the performance side of things. And then, of course, you're talking about the Mercedes BMW battle that raged for many, many years. There was also a time where cars like this went from being very comfortable and easy to drive to hardcore handling machines. I call this the Top Gear effect, and I'm a fan of Top Gear. Jeremy Clarkson wanted cars to oversteer all the time, even if it was something like this, a 520D. It's a beautifully sophisticated looking car, isn't it? It's not completely over the top, but subtle enough in a way that makes it look like you've spent a lot of money on a BMW, which you have, but at the same time, you don't have that stupendously large grill that you see on other BMWs. This one is big though, but I do like it. And at night, it looks even cooler. There are a couple of small details on the car that remind you that it's a 5 Series. Again, quite subtle. And interestingly, BMW only brought two models to South Africa, the flagship electric model, which is incredibly fast, but in my mind, a little bit too heavy. And then this, the 520D. And in these press conferences, we're always asking, where is the diesel model? And in this case, BMW has listened and brought us what I think is the pick of the bunch. You see, the 520D still handles better than its electric counterpart, surprisingly. That one's got a lot more power. The grip is insane, even on the slippery, wet surface. Acceleration is good. But because it's 2024, when you stick it in comfort mode, it's comfortable. In fact, it's so comfortable that you could do thousands of kilometers in this car. And when I say that, I mean that. Thanks to its insanely good fuel consumption, I'm talking five point something liters per hundred from this relatively usually sized tank of about 60 liters, you can get over a thousand kilometers. This one costs about 1.2 before options, which is less expensive than the equivalent Mercedes, but more expensive than the equivalent Audi. And with the options that's on here, you're looking to pay at least another 100,000. And even more if you want heated seats. I'm still looking for the button. I don't think it has heated seats. In this weather, come on, BMW. It does, however, have a beautifully clear heads-up display. And thanks to the South African palette when it comes to cars like this, it comes with M Sport package as default. No poverty spec here, people. In the middle, you get the BMW rotary dial that allows you to navigate everything. And then you've got the gear lever, which is made of crystal, I think. It feels very expensive and nice. You've also got the mode buttons over here, and I'm not sure how they get it to work because you press one, the entire panel goes down, but it only works on that button. It's very clever, actually. Visibility out the car is fantastic, and I still think that sedans are the way cars are supposed to be shaped. Parking is easy thanks to BMW's incredible park assist system, and although the automatic reverse system does work decently well, I think it's more of a gimmick to show your friends how cool the car actually is. Ah, oh, finally, finally, we hit the fuel reserve. With 90 kilometers left after driving this car for over 1,000 kilometers. And therein for me lies the lure of this car. Nowadays, with fuel costing as much as it is, even with the price decreases, everybody's looking for a reason not to go full up. And the 520D offers to me the perfect package of that old school driving experience 
a good handling car, lots of space, lots of visibility, decent pricing compared to its rivals. And then of course, fuel consumption that is not even noticeable. This car probably won't sell in great numbers and neither will the Mercedes diesel equivalent, which too, incidentally, is fantastic. But for those that are going to be spending a lot of time on the road, parking often, driving often, going distances and needing space, there still is an old school diesel alternative. And that car is the BMW 520D. You're watching Ignition GT, welcome back. To say that I was quite smitten with a 520D would be putting it mildly, but truth be told, I am a bit of a BMW fanboy. So I'm keen to know if Puppy and Brendan were equally impressed. Let's start with you, Puppy. The 520D, is it still that car or am I smoking my socks? It's still that car. BMW, I think a few years ago, coined it the business athlete. Oh. And that still comes through. Yeah. I love it about the 5 Series. So for me, when I was driving that, especially with that range mm. alone. 1,000 I mean, Ks, man. 1,000 Ks, yeah. yeah, on that vehicle. Perfect for road trips, perfect for city driving to the office, back home, all rounder mm. for me. That's what I love about this car. I do think that it's a throwback to the 2000s. This is like car of the year 2005, don't you think? Yeah, so if I, I have a me and motoring journalists, some of us, have a unique opinion on sedans. Sedans are still where it's at. A mm. big, luxurious sedan trumps an SUV every day of the week. That's and everyone comes to me and says to me, what about potholes? I've driven a GT3 RS around Gauteng for 600 kilometers in my area. It never ended up beaching itself on a speed bump, and it didn't disappear into a pothole. Yeah. So GLS is in a different category. But guys that say, I'm going to buy an SUV over a sedan that does not use an SUV to go down gravel roads. In Gauteng, if you don't do gravel road driving, mm -hmm. yeah, you're selling yourself short dudes. Yeah. These sedans are just exquisite. They're more delicate than the SUVs. They're lighter on fuel. Mm. Their tires are cheaper. They ride better. They're mm. quieter. They Lots are just positive. lovely. Yeah. They are just exquisite. So when it comes to diesel, though, specifically, Diesel, I, I'm still a fan. I think there's a place for diesel, yeah. non-bucky diesels. Let's put it that way. Yeah, definitely. And here for me, I feel like it's it's refined, especially when talking about that. It's <sighs> look, it's so low in fuel. Mm. I don't want to lie to you. 